Thank this you for conference reminding. will now be recorded. You're welcome. Ah, uh, if I had a brain. Okay. Show. Why do okay. you want the basting stitch out? I don't understand. Okay, so I'm we're gonna do it with the basting stitch out. So you know how to do it. And then I'm gonna do it with the basting stitch in and you will see why. But I don't okay. wanna confuse you by doing it with it first. Okay. Okay. That's All right. It. So if I forget, make sure you remind me. Do we have to take it in the in the Mac in the premiere? Do we have to take it into the modify module to remove that basting stitch? No, I think you can go straight on. I think you can unselect right on the area you're in, right on your design panel right now. In my Sonet, I just went over to the scissors on that page, and that was modify on the Mac, and it let me deselect number one. If that helps. Can, so in your design panel, Julia, can you uncheck it? No, the check marks aren't showing up. The check marks aren't showing up to uncheck. That's what I was trying to okay. figure out how to um, get the checkbox activated. Okay. Uh, I can't. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry. That's okay. I'll keep looking. Okay, but I'll come back to it. I'll okay. come back and help you afterwards. Okay. So just for you guys that aren't too familiar, if you want to know where a color is going to stitch, if you come and hover over the color over here in the design panel, it'll actually change the color over on the screen, just so you can tell where it is. So for example, go down to color number 16, because that's the big thing around the bunny's nose and mouth. So if you hover over the cover color, it'll change it so you can tell where that particular color is. There's other ways you can see it, but that's just want to let you know. So if I hum hover over the pink one, it changed his nose to a different color so I could tell where it was. So there's lots you can do here, just a quick overview. So we have the bunny and what I'm going to do now is I want to copy that bunny without the um, basting stitch around. So under the select tools, you're going to go select all visible. So when I select all visible, now I have just the bunny without that basting stitch around him. Okay. And then when I hit copy, it's going to put him down on the clipboard and you can see he doesn't have the basting stitch around him. Okay, I'm, I got to go back and tell you what page I'm on. And, uh, the basting stitch. Uh, okay, we did that. I did number 11, which was select all visible, copy, and now it's on the clipboard. Okay, so we have the bunny the way we want to create him into the uh, quilting design. So what I want you to do is we're going to get a new page. So we're going to go file, new window. So you're going to get a blank screen, but the little bunny's still going to be in the clipboard for you. Sorry, we the computer. Clipboard on Mac. Okay. Well, copy it anyway because I, I you did. still have yeah. it. Because okay. you told me that once before, so I didn't. I knew that. Okay, good, good. All right. So let me get the other one. Oh, I got all these pictures of everybody. Okay. Let me try to crush this other stuff out of my way. I can't. Sorry, guys. Get, get out of my way. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, curious. Judy, now it doesn't start a, it doesn't show a blank canvas now. I guess that's okay. I bet I'm running on a couple different versions. Okay, so click on the quilt block. So I am on number uh, 12. So this is all quilting designs that we're doing right here. And the one we're gonna use is fill a quilt block and beside it, it says an inner embroidery, which there you see the tulip 
and uh, echoing around it. So Thank just you. so you know, if you click down through these other options, remember the picture will change. So this one would be outlining and filling a shape with quilting. Uh, the next one down would be, you have a shape and the quilting's out around. Next one is no inner shape, so it just fills a block with quilting. And then the last one would be an outline. Hey, Carol, so you have you a me? bunch of different, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could show me how to get to that. Uh, I looked away quickly. Okay, so let me close that. So what you're gonna do is you went to, did you go to file new window? Yeah. Okay, so when you go to file new window, down there below, it should there's a list. It said uh, blank canvas, but there it. should be one that says quilt wizard. I got it. I, I just got the quilt block. Okay. Is, is right. that the one on on file uh, the file window? Yes. So okay. There's two, there's two places you can get it. When you went and said file new, you can go to the quilt window there. Or if Judy and I discovered this, like on your sheet, it says go to create, and then you have access to all your uh, wizards again. So go ahead, and everybody should be at this page, and we're going to plop an embroidery down into uh, the hoop to get a quilting around it. So we want to pick number one. And then go ahead and say next. All right. So what we want to do here, and I am on step number 15, I know that I want to make a rectangle. And I know that the hoop I'm going to use is a 240 by 150. So when this comes up, you don't have to do this. When this normally pops up, you're going to get the square, which is the first shape. And so think of this as the shape of your block. So I know I want a rectangle. If I try to do do this on the shape, it's only going to let me put one size in so it stays a square. So go ahead and put it in to shape number two. So that tells me I'm working in a rectangle. Uh, um, so in, now we're going to enter the size of how big our block is going to be. So down in number A, we are going to put in uh, 146. 146. And then for B, we're going to put in 2, 236. So the reason I chose these numbers instead of putting it um, 150 by 240, it would it would be too big for the hoop. So I had to give myself a little bit of edge inside the hoop. So I picked uh, 146 to 236 for my size, which is which is what I know it works. So you go ahead and put that in there. Okay. Questions on that so far? Well, that's just going to give us a little bit of quilting, right? Around because it's the hoop's only 250 by. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, it's going to give you a little bit of margin, so it's not bumming into the hoop. And okay. the reason I know is because I put the exact hoop size in there, and then it wouldn't let me put it in the hoop because it was too big. So I oh. had to uh, fake the margin myself. Um, and just so you know, over there under the shapes. You can have all different kinds of shapes there that you can um, create in. You know, if you had a block that was a hexagon and you wanted to create a design right into a hexagon, you have all those different shapes built in. You know, say you had a little flying geese, a diamond, whatever. You have all those different shapes right there that you can do exactly what we're doing now with those other shapes. So, oops. And of course, I also if you could kind of do, you know, the thing you keep seeing is that edge to edge quilting. I wonder if you could take the rectangle or the square and put just fill it in with whatever you want and that would quilt it, right? Yes, you could. Um, and you could make it a bigger hoop than you have, or you can make it to the hoop size you have and then put in your placement lines and just keep repeating it. You could make it bigger than a hoop size you have? Well, you know, you can create sizes um, bigger than the hoops you own. Right. Right? 
But you can't, you won't be able to sell them because they'd be too You won't big. be able to sell it, but then you could have it uh, split and get your placement lines in it. Okay, that's the part I have to learn. Okay, that's interesting. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So, um, but we can talk about that some more. We can play around afterwards too. All right, so I have the 146, 236, then go ahead and say next. Wait. wait. Go ahead. The cut, your cut line wasn't checked, so should I uncheck that? Yeah, sorry, uncheck your cut line. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I got to mess around with that, Mary, because I think it puts an extra quarter inch on the outside as a margin, but I can't quite remember. <clears throat> Sounds right. All right, I think that's what it does. Okay, so when you go to next, now you have this blank screen and uh, you could open an embroidery or we can paste right from the clipboard. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and paste right from the clipboard. And that dumped my bunny right there in front of me. So you should have all that. And then we're gonna go ahead and Say next. Ho, 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 there's the bunny. So what we want to do here is, you see how big the edge is around the bunny? It's pretty big. And that is the margin. And I was using that word earlier. I don't want to confuse you, but this is really the margin, which is the distance from the edge of the embroidery. So if I, what I really want to do is take it down between, you can actually make it zero. I'm going to use two. And you see how the outside edge of the embroidery, the quilting area, shifted closer to the actual design. If I made it 10, let's see what happens if I make it 20. Let's see what it does. Oh, you see, that would not be good. So that's actually the distance where it's going to start echoing around the design. So I'm going to switch him back to two. And let's go ahead and say next. Ha, ha, ha. Now, wasn't that hard? All right. So it automatically is filling in that area I specified um, with the quilting design. Now, we we don't have to just do stipple. We have tons of options. So I just want you to go over here on this side and, and just click through some of these and see. So if I went on the channel, so you're just previewing right here. So you got a vertical, horizontal, uh, on an angle. Is this gonna be helpful? <laughs> Very. Now, is, is this design we're doing, and I mean, I know we may not sew it out, but is the bunny an applique? Is that why there's all that stuff there? Or is it yes, the bunny is an applique. Yeah, yeah. So he's an he's an applique for the. Um, hang on, I'll show you. So, oh, can you see that or no? No. Hold okay. it up. You're not, and so you're not in front of the camera. Okay. Um, oh, oh, there there I, oh, he's can, cute. Can you see it? So, yeah. anyway, the sweet pea for, I think it's for March, there's five different little bunnies like this. And so, that's how we came up with the idea of using the bunny to put the quilting in because people didn't want to quilt the table runner after the fact. So we just put it right in the embroidery for them. So, so if you were doing this, would you, I don't, so it does, once you send it to your machine, you, do you embroider it, applique it, and then it does the quilting around it? Is that how it works? Well, that's the way we put it in this one. But okay. it is a point of discussion. Do you want it to do the quilting first or do you want to do it last? And the way it's set up, the way we're doing it today, it's set up that the quilting will be the very last thing. Okay. 
Okay. Yep. So, um, of course, you got all these parallel and channel quiltings, and then I don't know if you messed around, but diamonds. And the one I did for uh, Karen's class, I actually use like the curved crosshatch. And you can see that different ones of these also have options available. So if you click on the options of one of them, you can see here uh, that you can change the gap and that would be the distance in between. You can change the angle if you want two different lines, if you want running stitches. You have a ton of options here in addition to just clicking through what we're looking at right now. Um, another one that you can actually go into the motifs and if you go to the motif one that is going to give you access to um all those stitches we're used to seeing um, as regular stitching so if i click on options under motif then here we have the different groups and that's the place where you could go okay let's go get a viking stitch i know i love it and i don't know crafting but you have access to all these different tools that you could actually use for your quilting. So let's see what that looks like. The star is the default, but. And that way you can preview and go, oh, that's kind of crappy. I don't like that. Or wow, that's neat. I love it. Um, so you have that there under, under motif. Another pretty standard thing would be an echo. And this one's just going to run out around the bunny. And what I like is you don't have to stitch these out. You can sit here and see them all before you get started, right? Here's some contour. And then the last one is shapes. And I thought that one kind of was weird, but I think that one would be more useful if you were filling a block and didn't have an embroidery in it. But So for the purpose of this, you can pick whichever one you want. I'm just going to go to the crosshatch. And that's going to be the one I'm actually going to go ahead and say finish to. So finish. All right, I have just completed. Can't get to all my things. There's so much stuff. Um, so there you go. You got your bunny, your quilting in your hoop. It's done. So what you could do is you can do a save now if you want to save him. If you're actually going to stitch him, you're going to export him. Okay. So export is up here on the top. <clears throat> so you can export him in whatever you need. You guys can all use VP3. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay to that. And it'll dump into your designs. <clears throat> except for I have mine mixed around. So it's not dumping into my designs, but you can go ahead and then call it quilting bunny or whatever you want. But basically that's how you do it. So questions on this one, and then I'm gonna show you why you wanted to take the basting stitch out. Did it make sense? Carol? Yes? What? You can't take an already digitized design and separate it on that panel on the left. You can, but you can't. You you have to go to. If you want to separate it, Judy and I were having this discussion the other day. You have to go to edit or create to see all the piece parts. So if I wanted to see all the pieces that were in the bunny, I was uh -huh. gonna go to create and digitizing. Oh, okay. or you could go, you could go modify Liz and then go to stitch editor. Wait a minute. If you're on home and you go to edit, 
Then it would open it in Stitch Editor. If my computer doesn't crash. Oh, I can't. Let me see what you're doing. I got the wrong size hoop. Okay. No, I don't think I can sell. Judy, is this what we came up with? You can't see all the piece parts unless you take it into create. Oh. Well, I did discover what? something that's a little more um, complex. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Mine was ungrouped. Let me put it back together. If you go uh -huh. into, um, you have to go into the stitch editor module still. Okay. 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 Who edit, edit module. How do you get into the edit module? So click there on edit where I just was up on mine's, that top ribbon bar beside layout. Oh, okay. You know, mine's grayed out. Uh, yeah, select your design. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why is mine grayed out? Is your design selected, Liz? Yep. It's got orange handles, so. That's, yeah. I don't know why it well, has orange weird. handles. Why does mine have orange handles? Well, also, orange handles means it's a can file, right? No, it's a group. It's a group. A group. Oh, oh, you know what, though? If I go up here now, I can ungroup. Now I ungrouped it, even with the orange handles. I didn't have to go to edit. Right, and then select the bunny, and then you should have edit on it. Huh. Okay, now I got three groups. I got three things. Why do why did why is the edit not lighted up or uh, active? I don't know. If I let me see. If I unselect, it's not active. But if I go and click on the bunny, Liz, and get my white handles around the bunny, and then I then the edit becomes active. Oh, but I can't get the white handles. I got orange handles. Did so you, you must already group. I don't know how I got orange handles, but I do. Go into the, the film strip and click and right click on the tulip. And ungroup it. I ungroup. You can ungroup it with the orange handles just by going to ungroup. Right. Well, okay. I just don't know why I have orange handles. So uh, go up there under groups and click on ungroup and see if it goes away. Nope. Nope. It's still orange. <laughs> So Liz, do you have um do you have the are you on the screen with the bunny and the and the cross hatch as two designs? Uh -huh. Or are you on a plane? No, I'm on the screen with the I'm yeah, I'm I've got the completed design here. Okay. Click on either one of the designs and you should get white handles. What do you mean click on one of the designs? Over on your film strip on the left. Yeah. If you put your cursor over one or one or two and click on it. Then my white my orange handles went away and became white. Because <laughs> it won't let you go into edit with two things selected. That's why. Oh. We did figure that out. Okay. Oh, now I've got white handles. Okay. Yeah. No. So if okay. You click on a bunny on the film strip. Edit should be active. Yep. Got it. Okay. All right. So 
what I want to show you guys is I want to show you what would have happened um, if I didn't take if I didn't take the basting line out. I think this PC is on um, Florida time or something. It's, okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and, and start it again. And if you wanna work along with me, go ahead, but you don't have to. So my hoop's already there. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that. And I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert the original design. <clears throat> so I'm going to go get the bunny, the VP3 bunny, just like that. And now he has, he has the basting lined around him, okay? So I'm going to take him and I'm going to go to create and I'm going to go to the quilt block. Oh, wait, I'm going to do paste first. I'm sorry. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to paste. So he's down on my clipboard. Whoops. Whoops. I, whoops. You just want to copy. Delete. Okay. There's my bunny. And copy. Okay. So now I'm going to go to create. And I'm going to go to my quilt block wizard. And I'm gonna select exactly the same one. And there's my sizes, they're still good. Go to next, there's my embroidery, paste. And go to next. And I'm gonna change my margin to two, but it's not gonna make a big, big difference. And I'm gonna go to next. Okay, so do you see what happened? That basting line, Leslie, kept the kept the crosshatch from going in around the bunny. So that's why I had you guys take the basting line out. So we have to be aware of that with whatever design we use if there's a basting line. Right, so right. we would bring yeah, the embroidery design in and check to see how it's done. Or right, because you can see the quilting won't go around the bunny. I'm waving my hands. I know you can't see them, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. So does but that make they, sense now? It does make sense, but what I guess it's saying to me is that then I have to check that on every design that I put in, or I'm mm -hmm. going to get to this spot and and figure it out fast yeah <laughs> I mean, if you were you know i was going to just take a design um you know from the samples and do it but i thought you might run across this problem that i'm showing you right now yeah and so i wanted you to be able to solve it first yeah that's great yeah i'll remember well i hope i'll remember that well, when you get here and go, oh, crap, it's not around the bunny, you'll probably remember then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically, you guys, that's that's all there is. Um, unless you have questions, that's really what I wanted to show you, how easy it is to do it. Okay. <laughs> Hey, right, thank you, Carol. Goodbye. Bye, Bye Liz. Liz. Thank, thank you, Liz. Liz. Yeah. Feel better. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Um, thank you, Judy. Uh, have you got a minute, Carol? Can you hang on for a sec? Yeah, I can. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Lee. Thanks, Carol. See you later, Judy. Talk to you yeah, later, Amy. Bye. Hey, bye, Peggy. Bye. Bye, Julia.
Okay. I think it's okay. just me and you. I, yes. I'm still here. I just curious real quick. Were you able to find it? So I kind of, I took it into modify and copied it. And then I went back into the main one. Does that, because I know I can get those check marks in the modify module. Did I just the makeup steps? <laughs> Well, yeah, so so the main thing, once you get that basting stitch out of the way, then you can um, put your quilting right in there. Okay. So uh, whatever whatever it is you got to do to take the base, hide the basting lines and then take it into the quilt, quilt uh, assistant on the Mac, you'll be doing exactly the same thing. Okay, so that's probably because I knew I could get those check marks and modify, so I did it. I went in that direction and then circled back out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and the thing is your Kimberbell, almost all the Kimberbells are like this. Like if you're doing the pieces to the pillow, they all have that basting line. So you need to have to know how to get it out so you can put your quilting in ahead of time. Yeah. And then my um my question is, is, is there a way to download if I have a quilting motif? Um, uh huh file is there a way to download that file in here so i could select it to put it in here uh is it a what file format is it uh off the top of my head i don't know it's app it's one well, of kimber it's one of kimberbell yes. like stuff to play with <laughs> okay so so you would have to do it with the same approach of and you'd have to bring it in as an embroidery so you oh, would do okay. insert and embroidery. You can't just copy and paste it in. You would do insert the embroidery, and then you could take your bunny, lay it right on top of that, and when you go to do your export, it'll say uh, remove the overlap, and it would take out the rest of that quilting behind it. Okay, I think I followed. I'll go play. <laughs> I mean, it's not that dense. You could just put it right on top of, but yes, you could totally combine them right here. But just remember, you got to insert it. Okay, so I'd have to in. So could I do using the wizard? Could I insert two embroideries on that on that option that that like where we inserted the bunny? Could you insert the the embro the the quilting embroidery and then insert the actual like like a house <laughs> like the but or like the bunny so i got yeah i gotta think about that one i'm Maybe. making it too hard i'm sorry you should well, be able to shouldn't you yeah i couldn't see well if you're getting the quilting design you don't need to go into the quilt wizard right you just be putting the first embroidery in which would be your quilting and then you just be laying your other design on top of it and then combine them and they'll be ready to go uh, so i wouldn't even need to go through the wizard i just go into the main module and paste one and then paste the other on top yeah correct paste. okay i'm with you now <laughs> that's correct. makes more sense okay correct. yeah you would just put the both of them in there and if just remember they're going to stitch in the order you brought them in unless you move them around so bring in your quilting and then bring in your house or whatever and then do combine because if you bring them in the other way that quilting's going to go on top of your house okay so i want to bring in the quilting then i'd want to bring in the house and then um, when you say combine is group the same thing uh well combine or when you export yeah. it's going to combine them if you didn't okay so i have right? to export and when i say export it will ask me if i want to combine it it'll well, be checked yeah yeah it would be in this area i'm gonna click on um export you're gonna get that pop-up julia it looks pretty close to this and normally mine is always set up like this for combine remove the overlap color sort blah 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 blah. it'll happen automatically if you don't do it ahead of time oh, okay so i would just leave it i just went and, i just went and checked it and so i would leave the combine um, do you, would, would you tell it remove overlap or if you don't care if it quilts underneath, you don't need to, do you? You don't have to. I mean, uh, 
I usually let remove overlap checked all the time because normally there's things that come up you're going to forget about and you do want it to take the overlap out of there. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything either way because those designs are so light from Kimberbell, the quilting designs. Okay. And then color sort, what does color sort do? Does that, because do you really want it to color sort or wouldn't you want it to stitch in the order? Well, remember it says optimize for sewing. So uh, let's take the example that you had two of these bunnies exactly the same. Yeah. You might want it to put all the, you might want it to color sort and do the outline of both the bunny ears at the same time. Okay, so if I'm stitching like two similar things, I want to leave it on, but otherwise I don't really, because if I have black eyes that are at the end that I need to put at the applique first, I don't want to have it pulled forward to stitch with black tires that are the underlie or something. Yeah, it, it's smart enough not to do that. Okay, so am I usually okay to leave color sort checked? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, there's a couple exceptions and not to get down in the dirt too much, but. Oh, you're fine in the dirt. <laughs> okay, so well, some some people, when they digitize <laughs> appliques, uh -huh. certain brands, they'll, they're too lazy to change the color for each step of the applique. Yes, so if you, run a, <laughs> if you run a color sort on some of those, it won't stop because they didn't change the color with each step, if you know what I mean. Yes, I've run into your... and I went in and put my own color on it. Correct. See, that's that's one time when you got to watch the color sort. See, you're learning so much, Julia. Huh. <laughs> well, that's why I say go to the go to go play in the dirt because it may be a question yeah. that I have and just <laughs> have a torture. Yeah, there's me. definitely embroiders out there that that that's what they do, and then you basically screw yourself, right? Because you're like, oh my god, it's not stopping. Yeah, because, yeah, I had one, yeah, I caught on to that, yeah. so, okay. Yeah. And then the optimized stitch link, that's that's fine to leave checked for the most part, too, then. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Judy, do you have anything to add to that? Because Judy's a genius, not me. Well, I'm looking at your screen. I'm not a genius. Um, yours are all grayed out, so it's not going to apply them on this particular export even though they're checked because they're grayed. Um, it depends on your design, um, whether it lets you do them or not. So, and it depends on what you've got set up in your configure for export. If you go to the configure module, Julia, there's okay. an export tab and you can turn those on or off. So, um, oh, okay, so I can set it up for what I prefer so I don't have to uncheck and check all the time. Right, but again, okay. it may gray them out on you and not let you apply them. Okay, yeah, and mine, mine are black, so I can I can check and uncheck. Okay, yeah. As I, as I yeah, prefer. My, mine are black too. I think it's just... Uh, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I think it's the color, because I noticed when you highlight over it, it allows you to select it. It, it doesn't just... Yeah. Okay, they just look grayed yeah. out to me, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, they do well, look great out. I just noticed when she scrolled over it, the, the check marks were changing color, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they told us, they told us, I don't know if I talked about this, but the reason that this stuff is more, more of these tones are for people that have uh, vision issues. Yeah. And that's why they, yeah. So I found that pretty interesting that they actually thought about something like that. Like if somebody has macular, and they're having trouble that keeping it this shades is better than having all the different colors for them. Okay. And then okay. I have a totally unrelated question if you have, uh, have a minute or I know you needed to talk to Judy, so. No, we're fine, go ahead. So if I wanted to create a five by seven template that I could import a design onto to create my own mug rug, like I don't wanna use, um, I just I, I wanna I wanna create myself a background where I can import like some of the flat designs that you see out there. Yes. Uh, so do I use the create module and just format myself a five by seven square? Or what's my best path? Well I've kind of cheated to this point. I go I go over to modify and copy off of other patterns and move them. 
Well, that's what I would do. I would take the Kimberbell yeah. mug rug that you like the setup and and uh, kind of do the ghosting thing and then just copy, you know, when you just have the part you want, like the, say you want to put two colors in, you know, two pieces of fabric, just mm -hmm. hide everything except for what you want and then go make a block from the visible area and, and there's your template. Okay, so that's probably what I've been doing is probably the easiest thing. Because what I was thinking is there's some patterns out there that aren't Kimberbell, but I like the Kimberbell base. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Oh. Jamie always I tells us, you don't have to start at ground zero. It's not necessary. <laughs> why? But sometimes, sometimes I want to change ground zero, so that's why I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, like this bunny that, that, that I did, it... Karen made it into like a mug rug and that's not the way it was designed, but I mean, it, it works, right? Okay. Oh, okay. I could see. Okay. Mug rug. All right. And I then would... the other, the other thing we did that just carried on a little further, cause this is the one we, can you see him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the back looks just like a mug rug, right? With the crossover. Yeah. So what, what we did because on the table runner it's got to be even smaller so we took that basting stitch from the very beginning and then copied it back over the thing so that okay. we had the do you know what i mean yes and you just reminded me of the question that i've had and haven't been able to figure out so i have one of the mug rugs it's a, a sweet a sweet pea mug rug it's a heart the heart one mm -hmm. Trying to connect, you know, at the very end for Sweet Pea, how it, it, it finishes it off, but it leaves the hole for turning. Is there yes. a way to modify that design so I can connect that final stitch together? Because what I want to do is put the put the envelope back on. Yes. And I've mm -hmm. been able to do it with the other ones because they're square and I know how to just go steal the envelope stitching from Kimber Bell and move it. <laughs> But I haven't figured out for the heart-shaped one how I could connect those lines to, to make that final stitch connect. Uh, she would need to go, oh, well, so it's going to be different. A, do you have like a basting line that, that from the very beginning where it's like basting down the um, batting or something, Julia? Yes, there is a basting line, but it only stitches at once. And I tried to turn that basting line into a triple stitch line and couldn't figure out how to do that. Because I thought, oh, I'll just take that initial basting line, put it at the bottom, and then increase how many times it stitches. And I haven't been able to figure out how to do that either. Because that was my other thought. Um, there is a way to do that. And that's um, in the modify module, if you use the object, tab okay maybe that's where i'm going wrong maybe i'm not using the right tab okay i use the object okay it will give you a funky little cursor and when you cursor over if you can isolate that one you know by unchecking everything else or by um going through your steps and only show that step yeah um <clears throat> if you if it will select that whole when you hover over it with that object cursor, if it will select that whole line, if you right click, it'll give you a pop up and it'll tell you what kind of line it is. And then it will give you a bunch of options to convert that line to something else. So go to object. And that's exactly what I was going to show Carol. Oh, well, you let's go do it. <laughs> so if you, yeah. uh, let's see, it doesn't do matter. I need to, do you want I me to unshare my, I'll unshare my screen? Into the stitch editor. Yes. 